Hi folks, this is a quick review of uh, some basic uh, factoring methods for polynomials. So we'll start with the uh, one of the easier ones, which is a trinomial where the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1. So we'll take uh, x squared minus 2x minus 24. So the trick to these here is to focus in on the constant term. And what you're looking for is two numbers that uh, multiply to negative 24 and add up to negative 2. So the idea is to just go through the um, uh, factors of 24, or maybe you can just uh, see it right away. In this case here, we consider uh, 6 and 4, which will allow us to get to negative 2. Okay, so we know that we're going to be working with 6 and 4. This will factor to two binomials each with um, uh, x in the first position. And since we need it to add, first of all, it has to multiply to negative 24, so the signs must be different uh, with the two numbers. And in order for it to add up to negative 2, we need the 6 to be negative and the 4 to be positive. Okay, now what's great about factoring is you can always check your answer by multiplying it out and making sure that it is equal to the uh, original expression. So if you were to multiply this out, you would see that it'll be equal to our original expression. Okay, we'll move on now to uh, a trinomial where the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1. Okay, so let's take this as an example. Say 6x squared uh, plus x minus 2. Now, while there's some more formal ways of factoring these types of trinomials, I'm going to strongly suggest that you just work with trial and error. Uh, in fact, this is probably more complicated than most of these types of trinomials that you're going to have to factor. We tend to just give uh, easier ones. Uh, now, when I say easier ones, is I'm talking about um, uh, scenarios where the uh, coefficient of x squared and the constant term are both prime numbers. Okay, that would be the easiest of these types because here there's only two numbers that multiply to uh, two. So in the second positions, you know you're going to have to have one and two. Okay, this is slightly more complicated because six has more than uh, just uh, the two factors of six and one. Okay, so you know that you're looking for two binomials. You know you're going to have one and two in these positions. The question is, is this going to be two and three or six and one? Okay, now with something simple like this, you can probably just do the trial and error in your head, but a little trick that I use uh, is to just create a little chart on the side. Okay, so let's say I know six can be six and one. So say one and six are the two possible numbers, the uh, two possible coefficients of x in the first position. Okay, and here I have only one possibility, so it's got to be a one and a two. Okay, now if we were to place the 6x here and the x there, well, it would make a difference whether I place 2 here or 1 there or 1 here and 2 there. So I have two different types of multiplications uh, that I can do to add up to my middle term. So I can either multiply the 6x to the 2 and then the x to the 1. Okay, if I were to put the uh, 2 here and the 1 there, so in this case here, I'd have a 12 and I'd have a 1. That one add up to a positive 1, okay, regardless of the sign. The other possibility is if I put the uh, 1 here and the 2 there, then I could multiply the 6x would multiply the 1. So I represent that by the diagonal line. And then the x would multiply the 2, this other diagonal line. So here I have 6 and 2. However, those won't add up to positive one either. So that means that the one and six don't work. Okay, now I purposely chose the one that I knew wasn't going to work. Let's take the two and the three. Okay, and do the same thing. Okay, so you can either have two and one and three and two or the diagonal option. But if we look at the uh, straight line option, two and six, that still won't add up to positive one. But if we look at four and three, that will work. Okay, but here we're going to need the 4 to be positive. So first of all, say I put the 2x and the 3x. Okay, I have to multiply the 2x by 2. Okay, so that means the 2 is going to go in that position. It needs to be positive. And then the 3 has to multiply the 1, and that one's going to be negative. So 4x minus 3x. Okay, 
Now, while this did take a lot of time, it's because I did a lot of explaining along the way. Okay, this can actually go quite quickly. So I would strongly suggest that you use the trial and error method uh, when you're factoring these because sometimes you may have to factor three, four, five as you saw uh, back in grade 11 when you're operating with rational expressions. Okay, let's move on to another example. Okay, so let's take this one here. So say I've got uh, 16x squared y cubed minus 4 x to the 4 y. Okay, now here we come on another type of factoring which we haven't talked about yet, which is the idea of common factoring. Okay, this might look like quite a complex expression, but I notice here that there's a lot of common factors that can be factored out. So please always look for the common factors first. Okay, so here coefficients have common factor of 4. Okay, then we see we have a common factor of x squared and then a common factor of y. Okay, we factor that out and we're left with 4y squared minus x squared. Okay, a much easier expression to consider and hopefully you recognize this as being a difference of squares. Okay, so here we're seeing two uh, basic factoring methods. Removing a common factor and now the difference of squares. Okay. And of course, the way to factor a difference of squares is the uh, first root plus the second root times the first root uh, minus the second root. So here we've got 2y plus x times 2y minus x. Okay, and this is the fully factored form. Okay, let's move on to another example. Okay, so let's take the example of x to the 6 minus x cubed minus 12. Okay, now here, this is not a quadratic trinomial. Okay, however, we can factor it in a similar way to a quadratic trinomial. Okay, if you think here, how could I turn this into a squared term? Now, this is often unnecessary, but if you do struggle with these, you might want to consider it. But uh, usually you can perform this operation without actually doing this uh, little change of variable. I can write this as a squared term by writing it as x cubed squared. And so now I have minus x cubed minus 12. Okay. So think of this x cubed as being like your x in one of these examples. Some people even like rewriting it as, you know, say let z equal x cubed. So you can rewrite this as z squared minus z minus 12. Okay. And this now is a very easy trinomial to uh, factor. Okay. So if you think about the factors of 12, that'll help you add up to negative 1. It'll be 3 and 4. Okay, and since you need it to be negative 1, it'll be z minus 4, z minus 3. And of course, we'd like our final answer to be given in terms of x. So this will be x cubed minus 4 times x cubed minus 3. Okay, now... Often you can just go straight from here to there and do that whole change of variable in your head. That's fine. But if you need the uh, extra assistance, you might want to do this here. Okay. Let's move on to uh, one last example. Okay. And again, this is a very uh, common one that is used that is particularly useful for a cubic polynomial. Okay, where you have an x cubed in there. So let's take a look at this example. x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. Okay, so you should definitely take a look to see if there's any common factors. In this case here, there aren't. Uh, so the trick to factoring these uh, polynomials with four terms is to actually group them into two pairs of two. Okay, and we notice here that when you look at these first two terms, they have a common factor, common factor of x squared. So what are we left with here? We're left with x minus 3. Now the only way this will work is if we can create another factor of x minus 3 
in these second two terms. Okay, so since I need an x in my bracket, I'm not going to be factoring out a 4. I'm going to have to factor out a negative 4. Okay, so just make sure you're careful with the signs. So if I factor out a negative 4, well, I'm just left with x here and 12 divided by negative 4, so minus 3, the second one. Okay, and this tells me that this factoring method will indeed work because if I look at this first term and this second term, they both have factors of x minus 3. Remember, common factors don't need to be monomials. They could be binomials, trinomials, anything. So again, as before, I'll factor out my common factor, in this case here of x minus 3, and we're left with x squared minus 4. Okay. Now, make sure you take a quick look at this one here, because you notice that the x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares, meaning this is not fully factored, and the expectation is that you're always going to have it factored as much as possible. So make sure that you always look for any last minute factoring. Here this can be factored as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Okay, so here uh, five methods of factoring with which we do expect you to be able to do in this course right off the bat. Okay, that's it.